It's been about three years since I've made any changes to the main solar panel system in my solar shed. Last year, I added a 12 volt auxiliary system to handle 12 volt native loads, such as LED lights. But a lot has changed in the last three years with respect to lithium batteries in off-grid solar applications. Back then, lithium was much more expensive and there were not very many charge controllers that were designed to support the different charging parameters of lithium. Today, lithium is more affordable and easier to work with than ever, so it's time for me to upgrade. The old batteries that I will be replacing are Trojan T105REs. These are heavy-duty lead-acid batteries that are purpose-built for renewable energy. Each of them is 6 volts and provide 225 amp-hours at the 20-hour run rate, and they're wired in series for 24 volts and 225 amp-hours, or 5400 watt-hours of total capacity. However, due to the nature of lead-acid batteries and in an effort to prolong their cycle life, they were never discharged 100%, so the total capacity was more in the range of about 3,000 watt-hours based on my settings. To upgrade my 24-volt system to lithium, I obviously needed some 24-volt lithium batteries. And while you can wire 12-volt lithium batteries in series, in the long term it can affect battery life unless both batteries have perfectly matched cells. To avoid this situation, I picked up a couple 24-volt, 60-amp-hour lithium iron phosphate batteries from MillerTech. These MillerTech batteries will be wired in parallel, giving me 24-volt and 120-amp-hours, or 2,880-watt-hours of total capacity. If I discharge these batteries 100%, then the capacity is roughly comparable to the lead-acid battery bank they are replacing. Now visually we can already see one benefit of upgrading to lithium and that is that they take up a lot less space and are a lot lighter. Earlier this spring I tore out the old battery box that the Trojans were housed in and disconnected all of the wiring. So here we see the second benefit of upgrading to lithium batteries. They do not off gas when charging so they don't need to be contained in a ventilated box. And that's one of my goals with this project and also my spring cleaning is to give myself more usable space in the shed for tinkering and for storage. The rest of the system is going to be reused, including the Morningstar charge controller and remote meter, the breakers and safety equipment, the wiring, and the solar panels themselves. Since these batteries don't require a box, I'm going to install them back in the corner where they're out of the way as much as possible. I don't intend for this video to be a how-to, so we'll just quickly hit the highlights of the work that was done. Now the one part I do want to at least mention here is that the charge controller does need to be reprogrammed for use with lithium. I'll go over this process in detail in an upcoming video, but for now I'll go over the highlights. First I connected my laptop to the controller with an ethernet cable. Then I pulled up a utility from Morningstar to communicate with the controller. Next I input all the charging parameters that I got from MillerTech into the software and to complete the process I saved the configuration and uploaded it to the controller. And after rebooting the controller I was able to verify with my remote meter that everything was working properly. And that's it! The upgrade is complete except for a few finishing touches with cable management. Thanks so much for watching this video. If you're interested in Miller Tech batteries please check out my web store in the video description.